You're listening to The Jeff Oregon Show. All right, Matt Beinberg is with us. He is the uh, education director with the Goldwater Institute. Uh, Matt, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Good, good. I, I want to mention you had a book come out uh, before we get to fact-checking uh, Governor Hobbs. A is for the American Dream. This is a, a children's book. Um, tell, tell us about that real quick. Sure. It's actually a new kids book we put out as part of our uh, Van Sittert Center for Constitutional Advocacy. Um, a is for the American Dream and basically an alphabet book for kids uh, that kind of goes through issues like the Constitution, gratitude, hard work, uh, kind of the ideas of America's uh, you know, founding and just kind of good old fashioned principles of, of the U.S. So we put this out. You know, there's so much garbage out there that's getting sent over to kids. We thought that you know, parents are hungry for, for good resources. So we, uh, we released the kids book, A is for the American Dream. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on A is for the American Dream dot com. And yeah, we're super excited to be sharing that with folks. That's great. I don't, I don't think it's necessary, though. I mean, you just go to the public schools and you learn all about that stuff already, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they talk about the Constitution all the time, right? And hard work and this and that. Uh, that sounds good, uh, Matt. I'll check this out and um, order one up. And I'd love folks to. Su- we need to support things like this, because all joking aside, kids aren't getting this. Um, they, they're just they're not getting it. They're not. Uh, we need to teach the Constitution more. So I think this is a great thing that you're doing out there. Okay, let's fact check Governor Hobbs and the school choice uh, rhetoric that's been out there. Uh, real quick, I mean, when did this come into play as far as just to remind, in case we got new listeners, you know, new people moving to the state all the time, Matt, it was just last year that the legislature passed this or the year before? Yeah, that's right. So we've had an ESA program, Education Savings Account, for about 10 years, open to just a few students in Arizona. And then under Governor Ducey, the, the legislature passed and he signed an expansion of this program. And so now ESAs are available to every student in the entire state. So any family, if they want their kids, say, Hey, look, the local public schools in my area just, you know, aren't meeting my kids' needs. Instead, they're able to get on this ESA program, gives them about $7,000, and they can use that either to go to a private school or to do at-home education, curriculum, textbooks, special ed therapy, essentially anything that's for their kids' education, they can use it for. So, got expanded. Um, now, there are over 60,000 students who have signed up uh, onto the program, and now we're seeing folks like Governor Hobbs' office coming out and trying to attack and undermine it. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know why, but let's go over some of the claims. I think I do know why, but let's go over the claims that she's making. Governor Hobbs' office claims ESA spending could account for more than half of new K-12 education spending in the 2024 budget while serving only 8% of Arizona students. Matt, I went to public school. Uh, we have a partially working abacus here on the show. That don't sound right to me. That doesn't add up in my simple mind. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't doesn't add up in reality uh, either. So you're you're doing fine. It's uh it's basically you know them trying to manipulate numbers and make it sound like this program is costing tons of money and barely serving anybody. And so we pointed out that if you actually look at this this ESA program, even with sixty thousand kids on it, its total cost for all of those kids is about two percent of what is spent on Arizona K twelve kids, right? So the idea that this is somehow breaking the bank and and channeling all this funding away from others into this just doesn't add up. You're, you're really talking about a tiny sliver of the total spending, but they're trying to play games with what funds they count and don't count to make it sound like, you know, half of our dollars are going toward this, but it's just serving a few kids. The reality is no, 2% of what's being spent on Arizona K-12 kids is going to the ESA program, but they're trying to spin it to make it sound like that's what's throwing things out of whack. And just to back up here, Matt, you got 60,000 kids on the ESA program now in Arizona? That's right. Okay. How many kids are in the public school system? I've heard the number 1 million. Is it more than that? Is Where's that at? Yeah, it's a little north of a million. Yep. So again, you're okay. talking, uh, you know, uh, a much smaller percentage of of, uh, of what's actually going to ESA kids. And, and that number is growing. Um, and, you know, we like to kind of point out even that million public school kids, that includes, uh, you know, about a quarter of that are families who've chosen public charter schools, you know, and that's using school choice. Those are great schools. But even that, right, is, is now 20, 25% of the student population. And our public education system hasn't exploded, even with the huge growth in charter schools, right? We still have district schools. They've been crying for years that, you know, charter schools steal money. They steal kids. Uh, and, you know, obviously that hasn't borne out. Um, the schools are funded more today than ever before in the past. And so this is all scare tactics. We've seen it before when they tried to oppose public charter schools. And now we're seeing it with, with ESAs because in both cases, 
they basically view this as competition and they don't want families to have that choice to be able to escape you know, their monopoly where they get paid each time they bring a kid in. Well, in my world, I don't see boarded up schools all over the place, public schools, Matt. So I would, uh, maybe they are somewhere, but the numbers just don't look like that. 60,000 kids. Let's just go with a million kids in the, in the school system. My simple, just in my head is that 6% of the kids are now going to, uh, use, utilizing the ESA program. They're claiming it's taking, they're, they're claiming, um, it's taking up majority of the budget, you said, or over half the budget, and only 8% of Arizona students are using it, but that's that number doesn't jive right. You're saying it's taking up um, 2%? Yeah, they're okay. trying to. Part of their numbers are based on their, their speculation about how many kids are going to be on the program in a year from now. So they're taking these very, very high estimates, okay. <clears throat> which are not what the budget analysts are projecting, and saying, if it grows to this other number here, look, it's going to cost all this money, and it's gonna it's gonna be this eight percent of kids. Even even if those estimates are met, and we get to that point where it's six or eight percent of, of students, you're still looking at it being about six percent of the total spending, right? It's it's still it's always gonna educate more kids, you know, as a percentage who are being served than it costs of the budget, right? So if you're educating eight percent of kids and it costs four percent of the budget or six percent, it's still a good deal from the perspective of taxpayers, right? You're educating students for less money per student, and this is something we've pointed out. You know, rather than getting kind of bogged down in the percentages, it costs seven thousand dollars for a typical student on an ESA. The average spending per pupil in an Arizona public school is fourteen thousand dollars. So it's it's just set everything else aside, twice as much money to send a student on average to the public school system as to give them an ESA. Okay, Matt. And and Matt Beinberg's with us with the Goldwater Institute, Director of Education Policy. I mean, that's the claim here that Hobbs and others are making and going and being re- really loud about students leaving the public district schools for the ESA program, and that's resulting in increased costs to the state. And you just laid this out. I've been laying it out for a long time, as as other guests on this program. $7,000, like you said, if you utilize the ESA, if you even qualify for that much, that's what follows you to the private school. But if you stay in the public school, that kid, that body's costing 14000 I've heard 13, you're saying 14, okay, about double. How how does this bankrupt the system? It just doesn't even make sense, even by crazy uh, government math at this point. <laughs> that's right, it doesn't. And that's where, you know, we again try to, to give a sense of, like like I said, it's about 2%. So just in terms of the magnitude, it's smaller. Now, it is true that if you're a student who was in, you know, a private school already or being homeschooled, those were families who were bearing the entire financial burden of that themselves, right? They were paying property taxes, paying state sales taxes, paying state income taxes, putting all this money into government coffers to go help other students, but they themselves were not benefiting from that, right? They were not pulling anything back for themselves. And so the state was essentially profiting from them before, right? To say, well, you're paying all your taxes and your kid's getting nothing for it in return. Now the ESA program says, well, we're going to stop treating those families or those kids like second class citizens, right? We're going to return some of their property tax dollars, we're going to make them eligible for funding just like any other kid. So it's true that if you have a family who had, for all these years, been saving taxpayers' funds by not sending their kid to you know, public school, now they're saying, yeah, I'm going to get on the ESA program, I'm going to you know, take a piece of what's uh, allotted to me. That's true. That's, a, that's an extra cost that that student, you know, to, to then support them. But that's still far less than it was in the public school. And it basically boils down to an argument of, you know, so the left seems to think that we should fund all kids as long as they walk into a public school yeah, that they yeah. like, and we shouldn't fund the kids if they're doing a form of education that the left doesn't control. I, I see how they're twisting that, and I see what you're saying. Hey, these kids were already going to the private schools, and they were maybe using the tax credits or paying. Look, my kids go to a private Christian school now because we did the public school thing. We did the charter school thing, and both turned out to be utter disasters, right, especially during COVID. It costs, the new rate is about, I, I think my daughter Olivia, who's um, going into ninth grade, I think it's over $9,000 right now. Now, we still utilize the tax credits in Arizona, but if we were to go to the ESA, we'd get, say, seven grand. We still got to kick in money, but I, I can see, okay, people weren't utilizing this, so they were paying property taxes, and then they weren't getting anything in return. And in, in the meantime, they're trying to count these kids and say, well, now we got to pay for your kids. Well, what if we stuck them in the public school and then it cost you 14000 I mean, have they thought about that? That's right. Yeah. And you, you've never heard a complaint from the left to say that we're, we're going to uh, not be able to, to, you know, 
too many kids are in the system. We shouldn't be paying for these kids, right? It's always, we need more money, we yeah. need more money. You never hear anything about, look how costly these things are. And, and I think it's worth noting, there are these families who may be shouldering that burden themselves. Governor Hobbs herself described her, her own story being exactly like that. She was interviewed and she said, look, my family, I was on food stamps growing up. My family chose to send me to a private school. They made that sacrifice. And, and the thinking is, that's exactly the example, right? Surely, even though they were able to, you know, pull together and, and sacrifice and do all these things to get through, surely that's a family who could have benefited from not having to make all those sacrifices, right? So if Governor Hobbs herself was able to benefit from private school education, even though her family was paying for it, that doesn't mean they weren't deserving of their share of, you know, educational funding as much as any kid going to a public school. Yeah, but we've seen this on education. We've seen this on private security. You know, you and I could probably go on for hours about the things that they're hypocritical on when it comes to, oh, but you go first kind of thing. You know, that that's typically what happens. Okay, another claim here, Matt, is that the ESA program could result in a $300 million budget deficit. And this, our great state has not had deficits, fortunately, in a couple of years. In fact, they've had billions of extra dollars and we can save that argument for another time about returning some of that money. Um, but is this going to cause a deficit? Where she's coming up with this? Yeah, so she's using numbers that, that again, were put out there and it, it was based off of a memo that her own office uh, said made false assertions. So they, they slammed this memo that came out and yet they themselves then used it, made some calculations and said, here's what we're estimating. So again, it is substantially more than what the nonpartisan state budget analysts are projecting. They have the, the actual budget analysts this year, the budget already fully funds uh, all the ESA students that are in the program and growth that's anticipated. And Hobbs folks are saying, no, we think it's going to be even higher than that. And they got the numbers wrong when it came to trying to be calculating how much it is. So Again, without getting too much into the detail, like I said, it costs about $7,000 for a typical ESA student on this. It does cost a lot more for a special needs student, right? Kids, yeah. whether you're in the public school or in the ESA, you have students with severe disabilities who might get ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 per student of extra funding. And so many of the original ESA kids were special needs kids, so that's largely what the population was open to. Hobbs folks basically used those numbers to make their calculations. So they said, we think every ESA kid costs $11,000 when actually it only costs seven. So mm. stuff like that. So even, even the numbers, even if the number of students who gets on the program turns out to be on the high end of what those estimates were, they're still just wildly wrong in terms of what is the actual impact? Because even if there's a couple hundred million dollars of ESA awards, that's not the net cost to taxpayers, right? Because like we were saying, any one of those kids who's switching from a district school or from a charter school to an ESA that's basically a wash or a savings to the taxpayer, right? Sure, there may be $7,000 going to the ESA, but you compare that 7000 versus what was going to be spent on them elsewhere. So the Hobbs folks, again, kind of wave their hands and pretend that this is going to increase the cost by that amount as opposed to saying, well, what's the actual you know, comparison of being on the ESA program versus you know, being on the taxpayer burden uh, in a public school? Okay, and Matt, even if... Okay, let's look at the $300 million, but they, they claim, oh, this is going to ruin public education and this and that. I'm a free market guy. And, uh, you're a free market guy. If, let's say 100,000 kids decide, families decide to put their kids into ESA programs, let's say it's 150,000. There's still going to be jobs out there for these teachers. There's still going to be schools that are going to be needed. So maybe I'm just thinking out here because I think a lot of people should live, leave the public school system and we should allow the market to develop and hey, specialized education here, this school does that thing, this, the other school does another thing. Um, there'll be jobs, there'll be better education, but nothing's being lost here. These kids are still getting educated. The, the money's just moving from one area to the other. Could it be the uh, the teachers union groups, things like that? <laughs> uh, you know, I think it could be. And, and yes, that's exactly right. You know, I mentioned the charter schools in Arizona as an example. There's over 200,000 kids now in Arizona on charter schools, yeah. right? And it's the same thing. The, the left likes to say, well, they're, you're not, every time a kid goes to a charter school, that's money that isn't going to the district school. Well, those are families who are choosing to send their kids there. They're, they're thriving schools. We've actually, Stanford just came out with a report a couple of months ago, showed across the U.S. public charter schools are outperforming district schools, including in Arizona, right? So for years, we've heard, oh, they're just a scam. They're these, you know, schools that are siphoning off kids from, from our district schools. And yet we're finding that 
even when you compare apples to apples and adjust for kind of student characteristics and everything, these schools are doing a better job. They're costing less money and they're teaching kids better. And there's hundreds of thousands of students who've opted for charter schools. So even if over time the ESA program were to grow similarly to the charter program, we've already seen that that experiment played out and has been a success. Absolutely. All right, Matt, finally, what do we do? I mean, they want this thing to fail. Uh, this could be the model that I think good half the states actually start to follow. I know other states have already started doing that. What do we do in Arizona to make sure it doesn't fail, to make sure that our kids have full school choice so we can try to fix education going forward? Yeah, it's making sure that, that people are aware of the program, right? We hear so much from the unions, the Red Fred group, uh, all of them that are trying to destroy this program. They're trying to talk, you know, say, hey, it's bad, it's terrible. Sharing the word, right? Getting it out and letting folks know, hey, here's what the program does. Here are stories of kids who've benefited. And I think we're going to see an, an effort from the left. You know, if they gain power in the legislature, I think they'll do everything they can to to pull apart ESAs or charter schools or school choice. I think they've, you know, made it clear that, that they are owned by the teachers unions. And I think it's very incumbent on folks to be aware of the issue and say, look, this is something that matters to me. This matters to Arizona. It matters to our students. And we're going to stand firm for it. All right, Matt. Hey, I appreciate what you've been doing on this uh, Goldwater Institute as well. And I encourage everybody to go ahead and search out Goldwater Institute that you guys deal with so many issues out there when it comes to uh, individual liberties, things like that. So appreciate that. Plus, uh, A is for the American Dream, great children's book. Uh, and we need more of that teaching the Constitution. Uh, A is for the American Dream dot com. Matt, appreciate it. We'll talk with you again real soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. And I'd love comments from you. Olivia will be up here in just a minute. We'll uh, go over some of your email comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. You're listening to The Jeff Orovitz Show.